Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And in this video, we are going to look at how to get the absolute value of a number and see two examples of why you might want to do that in Excel. So let's quickly start though with defining what an absolute value is. And in simple terms, an absolute value is its distance from zero. So on this spreadsheet at the moment, I have mainly positive numbers, but there are two negative values in A3 and A7. But ignoring the sign of that number, you know, the first one, the positive number is 200 from zero. The second one is minus 150, but it's still 150 from zero. So in the terms of working in Excel, we normally have to find the absolute value because we want to deal with a value irrespective of whether it's negative or positive. We want to treat them all in the same way. And the way we do that in Excel is we use a function called ABS for absolute. So if I wanted to know the absolute value of these numbers, I could simply type equals ABS, open bracket, select the number and close that bracket, and that will bring me the absolute value of it. And if I copy that down, you can see what it's done to the two negative values. So now I just have a bunch of positive values. And that's probably the most common use of it in Excel. Now let's go into our first example here, where what I want to do is sum all the numbers in that column. But I don't want them to treat the negative values as negative. If I just do a normal sum function here and try and add up those numbers, I'm not going to get the answer that I want. Because that 1350 is adding up the positive numbers to get 1730, and then it's subtracting the two negative ones. But I want to treat them all, irrespective of their sign, as a positive number. So what we're going to do instead is embed the absolute function within the sum function and select the range of numbers. Now, when I demonstrated the absolute function a moment ago, I only selected a single cell. Now I've given it a range of cells, and because of that, this becomes an array formula. So I can't just press Enter here after I've written that. I need to do Control, Shift, and Enter to run it as an array formula. So then I will get the curly braces in the formula bar above. And now I have 2110, which is the answer that I wanted. That's what I was going for. Now that's one way of doing it, to use a sum function, put ABS in the middle, and to run it as an array formula. It might not come as a surprise for those of you who are long-term uh, watchers and subscribers of my videos that an alternative that I like is to use the sum product function. It's a function I'm a big fan of and by using sum product we will not have to run it as an array formula because sum product is an array function. It can handle arrays. So really all I'm doing is doing sum product instead of sum. The rest of it is exactly the same. I just use the ABS function, give it the range of numbers, close off my sum product, and now just press enter. We don't need control shift. There's a normal enter like any formula, and there's 2110 like before. So that is how we can sum a range of numbers irrespective of whether it's positive or negative by using the absolute function. Now let's go and have a look at another example of why you might want to use it in Excel. Okay, so I'm going to come out of this function and go to the next sheet along where we want to see the absolute value help us to determine if some numbers are within a tolerance level of another set of numbers. So we've got some numbers representing something from last week and some numbers representing something from this week. And I want to know that if we look at the difference between the two numbers, if there is a difference, 
that it's within a tolerance level of 20, which I've written in cell E2. So I guess in a real world example, these could be some kind of sales figures against a target, or it could be the result of some kind of test of some machinery or equipment, and are the numbers within a certain limit of last week's numbers. And that's what I want to do. And my ultimate goal here in column C is to use conditional formatting uh, to provide a tick or a cross, so it's nice and visual, green tick, red cross, as to whether yes it is within a tolerance limit or no it's not. But we need to start with a formula here. So I'm going to use the if function in column C here, cell C2, because I'm testing a value. And then we need the ABS, or the absolute value function. And we want to use that, <coughs> the number we want to use within there, is to subtract last week's value from this week's value. So I'm going to do this week, take away last week. And because we're performing a subtraction here, the result might come back as negative, depending what the numbers are. And that is why we have the absolute function here. Because if the result is negative, I want to remove that sign and just make all the numbers positive for the rest of this formula. So I'm going to close off the function for the absolute value function and then test if that is less than or equal the number of tolerance, which is cell E2. I could just type that number in, like 20 or whatever number I, I want, but by referring to a cell, we can simply update that cell in the future and I can use any tolerance level if it was to change regularly over time. I need to fix that cell and then put in my comma. So I'm fixing it so that when I copy the formula down, it does not move and it stays on cell E2. And the comma brings us into value if true. What do you want to do if that is true? Well, I'm just going to put a number one if that's true, comma, and a number zero if it's not true. So one if it is within tolerance um, and zero if it's not. I'm going to close my bracket. So I get a zero here because 234 is not within 20 of 200. But when I copy it down, we can see that this one is. You know, 129 is only 19 off 110, so it is within 20. And so are these. That number's exactly the same. This one's only within 5, whereas this one is whatever. It's not within 20. <laughs> so I've got a 1 and a 0 here, which isn't the prettiest thing to look at. I could have got the if function to do something better in some way. But remember, my ultimate goal here is to use conditional formatting. So I'm not massively interested in what number gets spat out, because I don't really want to see that number in the result anyway. What I'm now going to do is highlight those cells, go into conditional formatting, new rule, and I'm going to change the format style to an icon set. So I'm going to choose my icon sets, and then I want my red cross green tick icon sets. So I get the tick, the exclamation mark, and the cross. I'm actually going to hide the exclamation mark because I don't care about it. I'm going to say no cell icon, just ticks and crosses, please. And then I need to specify the criteria. Now remember, I've got ones and zeros. One means it's within tolerance, zero means it's not. So this type drop down on the end, I'll change both of those to number. I'll enter one for the value. So green tick if the value is equal to one. And then it's got, if it's kind of equal to zero, do nothing and less than zero red cross. Now that's not right. So I'm gonna change that to greater than. So then the last one says red cross if it's less than or equal to zero. So now I've e effectively got green tick of equal to one, red cross of equal to zero. So when I click OK, I've got some nice conditional formatting in. Now I've still got the ones and zeros at the moment. That was a mistake. I don't really want them visible as well. 
So if I just go back to conditional formatting and manage rules, and if I go and edit the rule that I've got there, what I want to do is tick the box for show icon only. So when I click OK, it does not show the value of the cell, it just shows the icon. Now the formula is still in the bar, you know, the value is still there. I'm just asking it not to appear in the cell. I can resize that column to maybe make it look a bit better, maybe. And we have what we want. So a nice green tick if it is within tolerance, red cross if it's not. So if this number was to change and go out of that tolerance level, the cross would appear, but whilst it is, it's not. And that is another example of how the absolute value function might be helpful to you as an Excel user. But typically, its main job for us is to convert a negative number to positive within a formula. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.